Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video. And this video is going to be a guide video regarding how to get a lot of successful item sales on the GTN. So for those of you who know my channel, I deal a lot with economy videos, uh, selling stuff on the GTN, mostly actually buying stuff and, and gambling and all that good stuff. And, um, and it's not uncommon for me to put up a video where I've sold like hundreds of items in a matter of a few days. And a lot of people actually ask me, you know, how do you get so many successful item sales? Because a lot of people do have some rare items in their inventory and they've, you know, opened cartel packs or whatever, but they have a really hard time selling it for the price that they want to sell it at. And, you know, whether you're selling expensive cartel market items or even just companion gifts, crafting materials and stuff of that nature, uh, getting those successful item sales can sometimes be really tough. So I will start this video out firstly with the basics because I know there are also a lot of new players on my channel. Some people actually ask me simple, really basic questions like what is the GTN and stuff like that and you know what are you selling on so really basic stuff. So I'll start this video off with just for those new players that are just starting the game and uh, maybe who knows even if you're experienced you'll learn some techniques that will really help your ease of access and then I'll go into some more um, uh, you know move on to some more experienced techniques that people can use to sell your items. So we'll start with the basics. Firstly, here are some tips to increase your ease of access. When you hold shift and left click and you click on a certain item, it will automatically populate the search bar on the GTN. So this will allow you to really easily search the GTN for a certain item and see what that item is being auctioned for. Really basic, probably a lot of you already know this, but I didn't know this for the first one and a half years of playing this game and I was selling on the GTN. So it was a complete bore. I had to keep typing in the name over and over again. And when I found this tip out, my mind was just blown and I couldn't believe how much easier and how much time I was saving. So there's a gift for anyone that didn't know that. Um, Okay, secondly, if you hold, if you have a stack of items, you can hold shift and right click and this will allow you to split the stack and control how many items you want to sell. So let's say if you have 100 uh, companion gifts, you only want to sell 10, this is how you can split the stack. Thirdly, if you are selling a stack of items but you don't have a calculator handy, you can put up one individual item for a certain price and then put up the entire stack and the price of the stack will adjust accordingly. And then finally, uh, to ensure maximum profit and guarantee that you have the lowest price, a lot of people selling on the GTN will do a practice called undercutting, which is basically they will offer their item or auction their item for one or two credits lower than the cheapest offer on the GTN at the time. So if you're new to the GTN and you want to maximize your profit, you should definitely practice undercutting. Really basic, everyone already knows this. However, um, you know, undercutting by one, two, or even a couple hundred thousand credits still might not guarantee you a sale. So this leads us away from the basics now and on into the more complicated components of selling on the GTN. So I do have for you guys, let's see here, I have uh, seven tips and these tips are things that I've used to help, I don't know, trick people into buying my items and uh, it has helped me get a lot more successful item sales. All right, firstly, the first thing you want to do is remember to know what price your product sells at, okay? So the best way to determine this is to monitor trends on the GTN. So if you are trying to sell a completely new item that you have no experience with whatsoever, always try to sell it for as high as you can. You can do this by undercutting the lowest offer on the GTN by what one credit as we talked about earlier. However, if after a few days that item does not sell, that means that that item is probably not selling at that price and it might not be worth it to keep trying to sell it for a high price. Uh, this might mean that it is time to undercut the offer by more than one or two credits. So depending upon how expensive your item is, you might want to under, uh, consider undercutting it by thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of credits if the situation calls for it. So I'll give you guys an example. Recently, I've been trying to sell the Temple Guardian helmet. Now I have put this helmet up for 5 million credits, for 6 days consecutively it has not sold. So that means it, at this point in time, it is probably not selling for that price. Now if I have the patience and the time, I can keep trying to sell it for 5 million. Maybe eventually someone will come and buy it because it is a very nice looking helmet, it's gold rarity, it comes from a really old cartel pack. But if you are looking for a quicker sale because you want the credits as soon as possible, you're saving up for an item you really want, then list the item for 4.5 million credits. If it still doesn't sell after a few days, it might be even time to go lower than that. Uh, you know, I think a lot of players get caught up because they think it's a really nice helmet, it's gold rarity, uh, you know, let's, I want to keep putting it up for a high price, I don't know why it's not selling. But you can't get caught up in that trap because the player based economy just works that way. You know, at this point in time, the simple truth is this item is not selling for 5 million, even though it's a really nice item. Um, 
Keep in mind though, of course, the selling price of these items increases over time, right? So if you have a really nice item that isn't selling too high at the moment, it might be in your favor to hold on to that item for a little bit and then try to sell it when it's even more rare. And therefore more people might be willing to pay a higher price for it, right? That's buying low, selling high, but that's a topic for another video. Uh, so number two, if you have more than one of the same item and, they, and there aren't many sales on the GTN, you can play a little trick that might actually help you get a sale. So I'll be using the die module kits as an example because there aren't any on the GTN right now. So I know these kits sell for around the 1 to 2 million credit range. This is just because I've sold so many of these. So what I will do is I will put one kit up for 20 million credits. Then I'll hop onto another tune and I'll put another one up for 19 million credits. And then for the last one, I will hop onto another tune and put it up for 3 million credits. Now it seems like I'm offering a really good deal because I undercut the lowest offer, which is myself, but I've undercut it by 16 million credits and, and no one knows that that's just me on three different characters. So someone will be much more inclined to buy my item because they're going to be thinking they're getting an amazing deal. Uh, this will result in a faster sale, but note that I'm also selling this for 1 million higher than what I would normally try to sell it for. So I'm getting a sale at a higher price and I'm getting it much quicker. So it's a nice little trick, but there are some conditions where you have to have you know, numerous versions of the same item and there can't really be many people selling it on the GTN. Moving on into tip number three. Uh, this is one that uh, applies to basically every situation. You're going to want to round down as much as you can. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a popular technique to undercut the lowest offer by one or two credits in the hopes of getting as many credits as possible for a particular item. But sometimes it might be in your better interest to undercut by just a little bit more in order to get that successful sale. Uh, my strategy is always to round down to the lowest possible first digit. So for example, let's say that someone has listed an item for 3,100,000 credits. So rather than listing it for like 3,099,000 credits or even just 3 million credits, I would actually list it for 2,999,999 credits. Although I have basically listed it for 3 million, by going just one credit lower, I got that first digit to a 2 rather than a 3. And so psychologically, it actually seems like a lower price and someone who really wants that item might be more inclined to buy it than if it was 3 million credits. It seems really small, but trust me, ever since I started using this, I've been getting a lot more sales. It might just be actually due to happen chance, it might not really matter that much, but I think, you know, what's one credit to you, right? If it even just it has a 1% chance of helping you get a sale, you might as well use that technique. All right, so moving on to tip number four, I uh, will talk about selling armor pieces specifically. So there are three ways to sell uh, armor sets, right? You could sell the entire armor set as a box if you have it. You can sell them as the smaller boxes. You can split, up, split them into uh, the upper supplementary or lower body armor. So you get those from the cartel packs or you could sell them as individual pieces. So if you get the box, you open the box, you uh, wait for the buying timers to run out on the armor, and then you put those individually up on the GTN. So the best way to determine which way to sell them is to obviously just go look on the GTN and see what is selling for the most because it doesn't always follow the same trend, right? Someone might be putting up a single armor piece for like 1 million credits, but you can get the entire set for like 500,000 credits. So it's obviously in that case much better to just open the box and try to get the single armor piece to sell for more because some people don't check, right? Uh, which is a good um, tip for you guys. If you're trying to buy an armor set, always check to see what the entire set is selling for, what the box is selling for, and then what the individual pieces are selling for to make sure you're getting the best deal. Uh, for example, I just recently sold the Satil Sean supplementary armor box for millions of credits, okay, for like two to three million credits. But the armor box itself only contains the belt, which sells for a measly 300k. So in this case, it was obviously much more profitable to sell the box rather than the individual piece. On the other hand, not everyone falls for this trick though. So if you have a certain armor piece and it doesn't seem to be selling, you might want to check the price of the armor box or the entire set. Uh, the reason your item might not be selling is because people are listing the armor boxes at a lower price. So in summary, you know, sometimes it's useful to sell it as an armor, uh, just the armor box. Sometimes it's useful to sell the individual pieces. Uh, you know, try to play the GTN and see what will get you the most amount of credits. All right, going on into number five, this next, next tip deals exclusively with items from the cartel market. If you want to get quick sales and you also want to get the best deal for your sales, uh, in my opinion, don't ever sell an item when the cartel pack that that item comes from is still available on the cartel market. 
because oftentimes this means that the market is extremely flooded, you will not get a good value on your item, and there's also a lot of competition to sell that item because a lot of people have opened the packs and they're trying to get their items sold. Conversely, you should actually be looking at buying good deals from the GTN. So buy those items at low prices because at this point in time, when that pack is still available from the, on the cartel market, that means that those items are going for the lowest that they probably will ever sell for. So the best time to actually sell your items is a few weeks after the, uh, the cartel pack has been embargoed, meaning it's removed from the cartel market, probably not going to return for a year or so. The reason you want to wait a few weeks though is to let the items that are already existing on the market sell and therefore your item will become rarer and more valuable. So once again, if you have an item it's not really selling, that might be because there's too much competition and you're going to want to go and look and see if, if that cartel pack that that item comes out of is still available and maybe that's the reason why you're not getting the sale. Moving on to tip number six. Sometimes the GTN is actually not the best place to sell your item. You can use the trade chat channel in order to advertise your item and its price and the best place to advertise is obviously on the Imperial or the Republic fleets where you have the highest population and, and you know more of a, uh, of a customer base. So this often works really well if you are selling really expensive items because remember that the GTN takes 10% of the profit from your sale. So if you sold an item for 10 million credits, the GTN will take 1 million of those credits. You'll only receive 9 million. But if you traded that item to someone, you will receive the full 10 million credits. So this is obviously dealing with people who are selling things for much higher prices, but who knows, you might get lucky with a cartel market um, pack, get a really rare and exclusive item. You might want to consider trading that and trying to sell it that way rather than uh, selling it on the GTN where a huge chunk of your profit is going to get taken. And then finally, for tip number seven, uh, just a really simple one here. When listing items on the GTN, it's often a really good strategy to use consecutive numbers. Uh, they're psychologically proven to be more attractive. They will catch the eye of anyone looking, and who knows, it might help you get some, uh, some sales. I always use consecutive items. So the two things I always remember when listing an item on the GTN is number one, try to make it consecutive numbers, like as I talked about earlier, 2,999,999, and then also trying to round down to the lowest first digit so that it seems like a lower price. Uh, so those are my top 10 tips on how to get successful item sales. Uh, these are all tips that I use and I feel as though they have kind of really helped me get a lot of successful sales. But it's really hard to tell. Maybe I just got luckier, maybe the population base increased. I don't know, but these are just tips that I always use. I do want to emphasize that everyone has their own selling style and everyone likes to do their thing uh, their own way. So when it comes to the GTN, you know, develop your own style and do your own thing. Uh, by no means is this the best way to do things and the only way to get successful sales. That's not the point of this video. These are just tips that I have and they have helped me. And uh, if you have any tips that I have missed, be sure to leave them in the comment section so that anyone watching the video can pop down to the comments and get even more tips to help them uh, get those sales. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found the video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one.